Southwest Florida, you are looking and listening loud at a magnificent moment in our history here in Southwest Florida. And of course, I'm Lee Pitts, the host of Lee Pitts Live, now in our 30th year. And I hope I don't look any worse for the wear. So proud to be the media sponsor of the African Coalition of Southwest Florida's end of year celebration. It is a magnificent affair yes, with African food, African clothes to boot. And when you talk about Africa, we can't get past Mr. Africa himself. <laughs> Thank God he for just, the <laughs> He don't just wear African memorabilia or clothes at an African function. He wears it all year round. That would be one, the great professor laureate the noted professor, Ludovic Kimball. Welcome to Lee Fit Live. Thank you, Lee. Thank God for the rumor. Hey, Martin man, Luther you King do said. not, <laughs> you, when it comes to your culture, you, I would say, in Southwest Florida, in the, say, 35 years I've been in the area, there's nobody who is more supportive of various cultures than Ladobe Kimmel, and Thank I've you. seen them all. Thank you. Proud to be African. I've been seeing them all. Let's just, start just, off. Just, just like um, the singer says, we were born that way. We were born that way. <laughs> Bruh, let's start off. This time you you took the, 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 the what do you call it? Koofy. The koofy. And you kind of did a little dip with it. Pulled it to the side. It. <laughs> it looks so smooth. Just it looks like a totally different, just, almost like a beret. Yeah, just pulled it to the side. That's yeah, all. Other people noticed it too. Yeah, well, I like a, it. A lot of Africans wear it like this anyway. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. So, talk about what you got on. You had a new outfit. I've never seen in this. Well, one. I mean, uh, I got a brother outfit on. You know where we wear the shirt and the pants to match. Well, uh, it kind of looks African though. Yeah, and, you know, it's our style. Fixed it up with some real the stuff. colors. Yeah, and put a hat on to kind of coordinate. Put on some African. Uh, 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 Memorabilia for religion. This is the origin of Christianity right here, not the cross. And something that says, I'm proud to be black. You know, okay. we can't change it. You might well love it. I notice you don't have your African art out there right now. This is, why, why aren't you selling art? I didn't uh, bring in art to sell today. I brought some drums for him. Okay. And uh, the guy decided not to play the drums. are sitting out there, but he decided not to play them. The congos? Yeah, I have, a, I have about eight drums in my house. So he came by to see what drums he wanted and he picked a few, but he still didn't play. I see. Yeah. So you're the man who they can go to for anything <laughs> African, right? <laughs> Just Because sometimes when they have events, I remember, you would, they would be decorate with your African art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Talk about tonight. In the, it, this is sort of like the Super Bowl of all the, the, on, the, the new creation of the uh, African uh, Coalition of Southwest Florida. This is really nice. Yeah, one of the things neat, there was a, a need for something different. There was a need for a bigger coalition of Africans to come together collectively to do things in the community for social change, uh, to promote history, and to do things in a very fair way. Uh, we want to make sure leadership moves around, uh, that this organization is involved in a lot of different things. For example, Cabina's already on board for the African Coalition to become one of the first affiliates of the Florida African American Student Association. We're the only state that has such an organization, 43 years old, and now we're seeking affiliate membership. And that's so, yeah, and I will be approaching Lee Pitts about affiliate membership too. Hey, that's something, man, to have an authentic African organization to become a part. What's the process of becoming a part of it? All you got to do, we You're have approaching a, me right now. We have a, a membership thing. I tell you where to go to the website, and it tells you how to become an affiliate member. Carl Baxter has already called about becoming an affiliate member. Even Peter Denui was on our Black Student Conference a week ago. He's already talking to them because he's advising the African students in Florida Gulf Coast about actually becoming, these students becoming active. Since Middlebrooks and Fred and I stepped down from Edison, there's been no leadership for black students in any colleges here. So Florida Gulf Coast has three black student organizations. 
and we're trying to get them part of the statewide organization. I'm glad you mentioned Edison, which is now Florida Southwestern. When you look at that university from the outside, do, does it appear to you that it's embracing the cultures? I, I remember when it was Edison, it seemed like it was more, more, you know, black people felt like they were a part of what they were doing. They were outreaching to the minority community and, and all those types of things. To me, it looked like they've gone totally away from that. They've gone the backwards. Right. When, when Walker came in, Walker tried to squash the Latin American Student Association, the Native American Cultural Society, International Students Club, and the African Students who fought them into the Multicultural Club. He did not understand the need for diversity. Each one of those clubs promoted different aspects of their culture. Each one of those cultures have different needs. And so when the students work together collectively, they were able to address those needs as well as promote their culture as well. The silent balls. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's the problem we have. And we have a hard time finding black faculty on college campuses willing to advise students. Uh -huh. Middlebrooks and I are retired, and we're offering to go on these campuses to advise black students if we have to. That's sad, man. Sad commentary. It is. The uh, Tonight, we got to experience some African food. Oh, yes. We're hearing African music in the background. Yes, sir. And when we say African music, that doesn't mean, like, just rhythms from Africa or whatever. So we're hearing Caribbean music. We're hearing what we call African-American music. Right. But we're hearing those rhythms. That's right. Talk about that as a history. Well, you got to understand that the basis of our music are drums and bass. So whether it's African-Cuban or uh, African-Trinidad, or from the continent of Africa, African American, the music has the same beat. That's why when we listen to Latin music, we still move the same way because most Latinos are Afro Latin. Right. So those are the kind of things you get at the African Coalition of Southwest Florida. You get to hear the eminent professor break it down Thank you. in a language <laughs> that we all can understand, a descendant of Marcus Garvey, a descendant of Dr. King, oh, yes. a descendant of one Malcolm X, yes, sir. a descendant of H. Rap Brown, That's a right. descendant of Huey P. Newton, a descendant of Barack Obama. Yes, sir. Go on, name some Stokely more. Stokely Carmichael. Uh -huh. Diop. We could go on and on and talk about brothers all day long. Anthony Browder, who wrote the book called The Nile Valley Contribution to Civilization. Read that book, and it tells you the origin of Christianity that began in Nubia, Cush, and Kemet, not Rome and Greece. How do you remember all this stuff? Because I read all the time, and you know it. <laughs> and you because, got that library at home, huh? Yeah, hell of a library. What do you do? You just go in there and sit down and read it? Where do you read all this stuff? On the back porch? What? <laughs> Anywhere, in the, sitting in the den, wherever. When I'm at work, at break, break time, I would read a book. And you see what I do? I post books, and then I also cite excerpts from those books. I'm reading a book now by Hella McGee, called The Some of Us. Mm -hmm. She says racism has a negative impact on all of us, even the perpetrator. Mm -hmm. You always got a book or two going on. But you know what, how do we broaden our knowledge if we don't read? You know there was a time when they denied us an education opportunity to read. If I could tell a little simple story real quick about a man named Papa Dallas. Papa Dallas was an old blind man that sat on a porch. Whenever his grandchildren and kids came up, he knew them by their walk. And so when Lee walked up, he said, hey, Lee, that's you. Lee, you're going to be one of our spokesmen one day. And so his daughter, and I'm using your name in that, says to granddad, uh, I'm going to be an actor one day. He says, can you read? And she says, yes. He said, get that book from under my chair. He got the book from under the chair. She says, he says, read it. It says, B-I-B-L-E Bible. She sa he says, I want you to read that and everything you get your hand on. And she says, Granddad, how did you become blind? He said, the sharecropper told us, if we ever get caught teaching somebody to read, he'll burn our eyes out. He says, every night when the master would go to sleep, we climb under the house and take a different person down and teach him to read. He caught me reading one day and put a torch to my eye and burned my eyes wow. out. And as a teacher, you know what I tell my kids? Read all you can and don't let them burn your eyes out. My man, my man, the educator is in full effect at the African Coalition of Southwest Florida.
the uh, something you were talking about, I wanted to bring up. Um, this is the first time I've done like this. Let's let's switch gears. Let's go to yes. This is what I meant to bring up. Redistricting. Well, redistricting is a real problem. We got two areas that we need to look at. First, the county, which gerrymandered redistricting last time with the endorsement of the NAACP, it's sadly to say, and took the black community, divided it up, and drew it out into the river in the North Fort Myers. That's what helped Tammy Hall and Pendergrass get elected. The question is, can they get elected under a true single member district where you only elect people from your district and you can easily hold that person accountable? The people in that district are the only people who can vote for you. Too, only right? people in that district can vote for you, and when they don't like you, they can get you out. But what happens now, you don't have to win your district. You can spend your time campaigning in the other districts, get elected, then when you get in office, never address the needs of your district, address the needs of the others so you get reelected again. Now, in at-large voting, everybody can vote on all seven commissioners? All seven commissioners, that's right. And right now with the school board, we have five single member and two at-large. At the last EDAC meeting, Peter and I asked them to investigate moving toward seven single members. Now, the attorney had misinterpreted the data thinking we could only move to seven at large. I didn't think that makes much, like, much sense. But we got information this week that this school board can sit down and vote in seven single member districts. And we asked this school board not to do what the county did. The county took map five. That's not what we wanted. We wanted map seven, which is one recommended by Brian Hammond and uh, 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 Frank Mann, mm -hmm. and, and the NAACP supported Correct. that. So we're asking the school board right now to adopt map seven. Do not do what the county did and adopt map five. The county makes it very clear that they don't care mm -hmm. about the needs of the African-American community. They have a picture of Robert E. Lee in a Confederate uniform, somebody committed treason hanging behind them. We have asked them to put it on the ballot to let us vote on single member and at large, and they will not do it because they know they're going to lose it. And just recently, a strong delegation, including the uh, 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 Greater Women black women Voters, went before them and asked them to adopt Map 7, and they turned us down and adopted Map 5. So now this is going to head into state to court, right? It's In the court now, fought. yes. This is a good fight to be fighting, right? Yes, sir. This, the way the government, county government structure set up in uh, Lee County harkens back to old Jim Crow. Yes, sir. Uh, that type of a government structure yes. that many people have fought for uh, you know, hundreds of years to try to get equal representation. That's right. Mr. Professor, break that down for us. Well, when you have a large election, you have taxation without representation. You've never had an African-American elected to county commission. You have Melba Morgan appointed. When she ran, she warned her district been lost because of at large. We've had at least 12 African-Americans run for school board. I'd be willing to bet if you go back and look at the statistics, all those who ran who were Democrat won that district. And Lovey Wells ran as a Republican. He said he won the district too. But it's interesting that it makes it very clear that that's been a precedent already set that we can win our district, but we can't win at large because of racism. And one a great place to look at an example in terms of single member districting is with the wards in the city of Fort Myers. Mm -hmm. We eventually had Veronica Shoemaker to get through that glass ceiling by single member districting, right. being elected as the first black elected official in Southwest right. Florida as the late city councilwoman did. Right. That now when we look at our city of Fort Myers city council and see all of those black people sitting up there, you can you can draw a straight line back to single member districting for that monumental achievement? Well, the lawsuit was Abdul Abzid sues Fort Myers, sued the city of Fort Myers. That's who name was on the lawsuit. Now, Shoemaker was actually elected by at large. Did you know that? No. They elected her at large trying to prove to us that a large work. But we won the lawsuit, and they lost $1.5 million of taxpayers' money where they very well could have brought in single member district because the Civil Rights Act of 1965 says that large elections are illegal, and yet and though they continue to do it.
So the problem we got right now with the advent of Donald Trump, we got a new attitude here. The attitude is I don't care. The attitude, I don't care what you folks want. The attitude is that you elected me to office, I speak for you, you don't speak for yourself. That's where we are today. A white, a white person could have a gun, shoot people at a rally, and get off like, unpack that for me. Or a white person can stalk a child and kill the child and get away as George Zimmerman did. So what we find out is racism is alive and well in America and thick as, as cheese. You can cut it with a knife. But you know, every time we... I have no idea what you're saying, but let's continue. Um, the... I was saying the racism is thick as cheese. You can cut it with a knife. Yeah, every time we start to think in America that things are getting better, something always jumps off. Well, we slide back. <laughs> right. You're like, but, oh, we step forward with George Floyd and the police being put in jail, and then we step back again, right? Well, the sad thing is, and I hate to go here, we still got too many brothers that can easily sell out. Byron Donaldson, for example, <laughs> I saw him last night down at the pizza place. He didn't recognize me, because the last conversation we had, I told him that he doesn't represent this community. When you hug Donald Trump, a racist insurrectionist, when you tell Black Lives Matter people they're wrong, like they can't put the knee on your neck, and you sit around and, 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 and feed a lie that election was stolen, what can I say? You know, in the past we called those people Uncle Tom. Today we call them Motisas. We're gonna have to leave it at that, <laughs> people. <laughs> Miami has the oranges, but Fort Myers got the juice. Got the juice, we'll be right back. Okay. <laughs>